Today, we'll be talking about the story of this little boy named Michel, who is 15 months old and living in a rural area of Cameroon in West Central Africa. Michel's mother, Nadine, had no prenatal care before Michel was born, since journeying to the nearest town for medical appointments would require her to abandon her responsibilities, growing and preparing food for her husband and his extended family. But shortly before her son was born, Nadine's sister convinced her to travel to the nearest maternity clinic, where she gave birth to Michel. At the hospital, Michel's doctors examined him and noticed that he had a rash covering most of his body with peeling of the skin on the palms and soles. He had a runny nose, and on exam, they felt an enlarged liver and large, firm lymph nodes in multiple areas. These signs, together with the fact that Nadine had not received prenatal care, led the doctors to strongly suspect that Michelle was suffering from congenital syphilis infection. Blood samples were taken from both Michelle and Nadine, and son and mother both tested positive for syphilis. Syphilis is caused by Treponema pallidum, a spiral-shaped bacterium from the spirochete family that is so small and thin that it can only be seen with specialized dark field microscopy. They can't survive outside the human body, so transmission from person to person always occurs through direct contact. Congenital syphilis occurs when these bacteria are transmitted from mother to fetus across the placenta. Unlike Michel, some babies born with congenital syphilis appear healthy at birth, but typically within the first few months of life, their developing immune system detects the bacteria and deploys a strong inflammatory response. This inflammation in many tissues throughout the body leads to clinical signs of infection. If the infection continues undetected through the first few years of life, the child can develop permanent complications including abnormal facial features, deformities of the bones and teeth, hearing loss, eye problems, and neurological problems, including intellectual disability. Nadine was distressed to hear that she had passed this serious infection on to her baby. When asked about her health during the pregnancy, Nadine remembers developing an unusual sore in her genital area, and then months later being ill with flu-like symptoms and a rash. Nadine's story is consistent with the diagnosis of syphilis. She had become pregnant with Michelle very quickly after her marriage. Her husband had been her only sexual partner, but he had had several partners, and since syphilis is transmitted through sexual contact, he must have contracted the disease from another partner and gone on to infect Nadine. The bacteria had entered Nadine's body through the microscopic abrasions in the vaginal wall that normally occur during sexual intercourse. Several weeks later, Nadine developed a painless genital ulcer, similar to a sore her husband had noticed on the shaft of his penis a year earlier. Nadine's immune system recognized the infection and deployed both innate and adaptive mechanisms. This response was strong enough to eliminate most of the bacteria within the genital ulcer, which disappeared without treatment. However, the bacteria persisted in Nadine's lymphatic system and circulated in her bloodstream until, a few months later, she became ill with fatigue, fever, enlarged lymph nodes, and a rash that affected the palms of her hands and the soles of her feet. Again, Nadine's immune system resolved this acute illness without additional treatment, but the bacteria continued to persist in her body as a latent infection. Nadine's infection was diagnosed while she was still in the latent stage, so she never progressed to the final and most serious stage of disease, which typically occurs years after the initial infection. At this stage, patients can develop paralysis due to chronic inflammation in the central nervous system and potentially deadly aortic aneurysm caused by chronic inflammation of the aortic wall. Michel and both of his parents were treated with penicillin, which completely eliminated the T. pallidum bacteria from their bodies, allowing Michel to recover and the family could return home to their village. 
On a follow-up visit several years later, Michelle's doctor saw that he was a healthy, normally developing child. Nadine went on to have two additional pregnancies, which, thanks to her previous antibiotic treatment and efforts to follow up closely with prenatal care, both resulted in the birth of healthy babies. After Michelle's birth, Nadine's husband admitted that he had long suspected he had a bad sexual illness, but was afraid of what the doctors would find, so he neglected to seek medical attention or get tested. Overcoming the stigma associated with sexually transmitted diseases has been an important part of public health efforts to contain their spread. Campaigns to promote awareness about the importance of testing have helped identify infected individuals and effectively control the spread of these infections in the general population.